Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. Today what we're going to be doing is the first ride of my 1996 Suzuki GSX-R 750 S-Rad that I have been rebuilding over the last 12-ish months uh, on the channel. So if this is your first time here and you want to watch all of that first, there's a playlist, uh, Jixxer 750, you can see it all there. But what we're going to do today is we're going to run through the ergonomics just off the bat because I haven't put in much mileage on this bike. We're gonna talk about the power and the torque and how it's delivered and how the engine handles it and how the gearbox feels. We're gonna talk about the looks, the aesthetics. Um, we're gonna talk about the price. We're gonna talk about, you know, any extras if there are any on this bike. Uh, and we're just gonna do a kind of a quick rough review on it. It's not gonna be a review because it is a first ride. I'd want to put a couple of thousand miles onto this bike really before I would call it a review. But this bike is cool because Number one, this one is a kind of a limited edition color. Um, you wouldn't see it that often. It is, obviously it's out there. Uh, there's a cat climbing on my tripod right now. But it is obviously out there. It's just not that common. You, you know, you usually see the blue and white more often than this color. Um, other things that are cool is this frame, uh, kind of still is in existence today, even in the new Suzuki Hayabusa, um, harkens back to, to this frame, this, I'm not sure what you call it, it's like aluminum twin spar, I think is what it is. Um, and the engine sits into it, so really really cool frame design, very cool in my opinion. Um, obviously it has the upside down forks, a couple of other bits and pieces that we will talk about uh, throughout the video. But in the main, um, it's just in my opinion a really cool bike um, and it did come in both carbureted and uh, fuel injection versions. This is a carbureted version, I think 96 and 97 were carbureted and then from then on was all fuel injection. So. Yeah, just a really cool bike in my opinion, and I can't wait to get out on the road and talk to you all a bit about it, so let's go do that. Okay, so now that we're out on the road, the first thing I want to um, get into, as it's actually the thing that I've been asked the most about, is the comfort, um, and how comfortable is this bike to ride? So I am pretty tall, if you're new here. I am six foot seven, and I weigh around about 126 kg at the moment, I think, which is around about, What's that, 200 and, I don't know, 260, 265 pounds, something like that, okay? If you use those those digits, or basically 20 stone, if you're really, really stuck in using other digits and don't know how to, to transfer them. Anyway, so, the comfort. Like I was saying, it's actually surprisingly more comfortable than I would have given it credit for. It's, like, look, it's not, it's not something that I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, you should tour hundreds of miles on this, it's, the most comfortable bike ever released for a tall person. But it is actually pretty comfy. Um, like the seat is nice and wide, so generally the taller you are and the heavier you are, the wider those cheeks are. So, you know, that's a good thing. Uh, it's definitely wide enough for, for thine tuckish, which is good. Um, the bars are, obviously, look, they're clip-ons. They could do with being a little bit I'm not even sure, actually. I don't think there's much you can do with them. And so, you know, from a, the buyer's perspective, ah, I'm not gonna say it's comfortable. But other than that, you know, all the controls are fine to get to uh, tall or not. It's kind of like once you have your arms in place, you're good to go. So, you know, from that perspective, it's absolutely fine. And then we have the suspension. So I did rebuild the front forks. There's not, there's not anything untoward coming up through the front bar. So, you know, nothing, nothing bad vibration wise. So can't complain about the front end. And the rear suspension, which is the stock suspension. It is 25 years old. Is actually, it's so absorb. It picks up the bumps like surprisingly well. So yeah, no complaints there. Now, the only thing I will say uh, these stock rear sets are not comfortable in any way, shape, or form uh, at all. <laughs> the stock rear sets, uh, if you're as tall as me, you're going to have pains in your hips. This road is absolutely delicious today when it's, when it's dry. But yeah, so the stock rear sets, I did change mine um, to the adjustable AVD, avdbmoto.com um, rear sets. And they have transformed it. It's still not, it's still not something that I would say is like super comfortable, but it is a hell of a lot better. 
Now I want to talk about the power on the torque. Now numbers are on the screen now because my memory is not what it used to be, but from factory this bike had around about 126 peak, peak horsepower and I can't remember the, the newton meterage of torque, but it was plenty. Carbs still do change your fuel rate and all that crack, but to a lesser degree, they're not as precise as EFI. So you do kind of get a, you know, a, a weirder curve, it's a different curve. But the power and torque in this are absolutely unbelievable. Like I, I obviously, I have my CBF 1000, again if you're new to the channel, I have a CBF 1000 as well. And the CBF 1000 is definitely, it has way more low down uh, than this Jixxer. But like not something that, you know, you're going to be like, whoa, this is a crazy difference. You know what I mean? They're still, the CBF, which is a 1000, and it's it's tuned more towards mid-range. This is not 100 miles behind it. And it's a 25 year old sports bike. So it's, yeah, the power is there. The torque is there. And like this can be ridden, I'm in fifth gear at the moment. And it just pulls, it pulls everywhere and it keeps pulling. <laughs> and then when you get up into that higher RPM, which I probably won't do on this road because there's kind of stones everywhere, I was hoping there wouldn't be. When you get up into that higher RPM, uh, it, it's transformational. It just, it just goes all on now. So third gear, through the bends a bit here. And there you go, oh wow! It just, when you get up, that was only around nine and a half thousand uh, RPM, but it just, it just hits, it hits and it just goes. It's like, it's like changing down into a, a much lower gear. It's like, it's like you change down two gears and all of a sudden there's power there and all of a sudden you are on a different bike. And that's kind of, it's the way with a lot of, you know, higher strung inline fours you get that punch of power in the higher rpms like i'm in a low gear there and it's fine it's all smooth and dandy and fine but when you get into the higher rpms like now it is a different goddamn bike it is so so fast it's absolutely unbelievable and i love it i absolutely love it so power and torque if i could I don't think I can give a 10 out of 10 because obviously, you know, it's com in comparison to modern bikes, it's not there. Obviously, look, 120 something uh, brake horsepower for a modern 750. Uh, you would beat that with a modern 600, um, you know, and they'd be finer tuned and all that stuff. But for a sports bike of its time, oh my God, I can see why these things were so, so popular, you know? And it just flows, it just flows. And that brings us on to the suspension and the handling and the braking. Um, so the handling is, it's its the most precise bike I've ever owned, which is not surprising considering, you know, I own older bikes. But it gives a lie to the speed you're going, you know. it, it, it Obviously, of course, my speedo is completely incorrect, by the way, it's off by about 60 kilometers an hour. So if you see a higher readout, it's wrong. I still haven't fixed that, you know. I'm actually going very slowly. But the suspension and the handling are absolutely delightful. For a bike of its age, and like I said, the fact that it's all stock, um, it's all stock front, rebuilt obviously, and it's all stock rear, uh, and very old all stock rear. I think I'll go this way. Um, it's absolutely unbelievable at how well this bike does perform. It just tips in so, so nicely. And I've, I have yet to come across a section where I am not very, very confident. Now I do have brand new uh, Bridgestone S22s on this thing, which obviously do help uh, with the handling and that preciseness. But yes, it is, it is unbelievable. Suspension wise, like for a bike as old as it is, I really can have no complaints. Now we get on to the braking. So obviously as part of uh, of the braking, <laughs> the brakes are not so good. And there's Kel's Priory in there. So I will have to do a video on that one day. It is it is very, very cool. Very cool indeed. Oh, mm, speed bump. And that was a good estimation for the brakes. So the brakes, the brakes stop you well. And we'll turn around, we'll do a brake test in a minute. Um, I just wanna come up as far as here and then we'll turn. And I, I will do a brake test. And 
it's not my issue is not with uh the function of the brakes functionally the brakes stop you quite well except the rear the rear is crap but if you watch the reboot videos uh the rear had um a bit of scarring on the pistons so i probably should have changed the pistons but they're not leaking and it does work so i'm okay with it it's the feel the feel of the brakes is lackluster okay we'll go up here because they're really really bothering me with how slow they are brake test so you can see those brakes i mean these are older six pots um but they really work like I mean, if I'd, if I'd squeezed harder there, I still had, they still had more to give. We'll go downhill here and brake test. And we are from 80 down to 20, just there. They really work. Now, I do have HEL braided steel brake lines gone onto this bike, and I have uh, EBC double H uh, road and race brake pads. That does make a difference. Absolutely, it does make a difference. Um, but it's just the feel. It's those fixed six pots. And... I know in the past people have said that due to how long the pad is and how long it breaks over, you get this flex in the in the brake pad body, uh, which is probably what I'm feeling. But you see, the funny thing is, I went from this and I went from the Magna to this, and the Magna you get unbelievable brake feel because it's it's a really crap system to be honest. So you get unbelievable brake feel. Uh, ooh, nice corner. It's just a bit st oh stones. We can't go around that fast. So you get really, really good brake feel, but you just don't get the stopping power that this has. This stops quicker. And even I thought when I was braking with this, I thought it wasn't really stopping that quickly. Um, and then I you know, got back on the Magna and the CBF and I realized, oh, it actually, it's, it is stopping faster. So once you get used to the lack of feel, the brakes are actually functionally very good. It's just the feel. So we'll do another brake test here. 100 and hard on the brakes hard on the brakes hard on the brakes and we're down to 20 so you can see you know the brakes like i said functionally very very good now back to me in the garden studio for the aesthetics oh before we go back actually uh yeah i should have mentioned the front the front brakes are the stock 750 uh tokiko six pot calipers and the rear is the stock Takiko 2-pot caliper. Um, I have installed HEL braided brake lines all around and all, pist all calipers have been rebuilt, seals and stuff, all new fluid. So do go have a look at those videos if you want. They're in the Jixxer 750 playlist. But other than that, everything is stock. It's rebuilt stock, but stock um, other than the braided brake lines. Now actually back to me in the garden studio for the aesthetics. So now let's talk about the aesthetics of the bike. Now, if you've been watching the build series and stuff like that, you, you will know that I absolutely adore how this bike looks. Everything from that really just classic analog dash gauges or whatever you want to call them, clocks. I love them. I love the cockpit area in, in general. It's beautiful. Um, the lines of the bike, I, ju I just love how it flows. And I think Suzuki did a really good job on that. Um, something that they haven't done a whole lot in my opinion, I, I wouldn't be a huge fan of the newer Jixxers looks, obviously I still like them, um, but nothing like how much I like this bike. This bike to me is just, it's beautiful, it's kind of like a timeless beauty. Now I obviously look, I'm a sucker for bikes, I like, I like mo how most bikes look, there's an upside down cat over there so apologies. That's Splat by the way if you see him walking around. But the front end i love the twin headlights i know a lot of people prefer the single headlight personally i love twin headlights and um, i don't know why i can't explain it. it's just always been something that on bikes i do i do like the look of um obviously the lines of the tank i think are really really nice uh, i do think this color per helps this bike in particular obviously that's personal preference though you know uh, some people don't like this color some people prefer the classic blue and white and um, i'm just a fan of black and gold so i do like that the upside down forks, upside down forks always look good. And again, they just flow up and it just makes the whole bike look powerful. So yeah, aesthetically, there's not really a whole pile I can hit it on. Obviously the exhaust, stock exhaust is, I, I probably would prefer something a bit more modern, a bit more angular. Um, but for now, this one's fine. I really like the big chunky indicators personally. Again, personal preference, I just think it looks, it wouldn't suit this bike to have skinny indicators on it. I like the big chunky ones. It just, it suits how the bike was designed. Um, no, again, look, I might have just like Stockholm syndrome. Maybe I was just, you know, looked at it for so long. I, I, I learned to like it, but 
yeah I do I do absolutely love how this bike looks um, from the cockpit from the lines from the wheels from the upside down forks from the twin headlights I think everything is just really nice one thing I will mention is there's a double bubble non-stock windscreen on this and I do think it actually looks better than the stock I think the stock is quite um, cut off looking I don't know it, to me it just makes the front of the bike look that little bit more muscular with the double bubble so that's one thing that I do prefer um, on this bike that has been changed uh, and also the non-standard rear sets I've fitted if you watch that video I do actually prefer they look just because they're black the stock ones would look fine if you just painted them black and just to give you a better sense because I think this will show you better than the GoPro this is what you see when you're sitting on this bike obviously this is non-stock as well and I love the addition of this um, you know all the way it just flows up and I really think that is an absolutely beautiful cockpit mirrors arguable um, I think they fit the bike again but you know obviously not the most beautiful thing and I would probably uh, change this in the end as well for again a more modern looking um, reservoir but overall I do think that from where you sit from where you ride this bike there's very very little out there that looks better so the next thing I want to talk about um, is the cost of this bike so I did a full video uh, breaking down how much this particular bike cost me to restore but I did have a look and you can get you know the 750s rad it, it kind of varies wildly in price um, on color options and also you know obviously uh, condition <laughs> condition is a huge part of it as well so for me you know I, I'm very happy with what I paid to restore this and I was very 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 lucky um, that my uncle who used to own this bike uh, gave it to me um, to restore so I ended up paying if you if you if you take everything into account I ended up paying two and a half thousand euro uh, give or take to do to get this bike back on the road now you will expect to pay more than that I think if you're gonna buy one you know but actually buy one and then restore it or just buy one that's that's functionally perfect uh, you're going to spend a little bit more than that now if you compare that to what's out there modern wise obviously it really depends on what you want because a more modern sports bike with fuel injection and all that it's going to be more reliable um but it won't have the same character as this so it really it depends on what you want to put your money into you know for the same price you can get a much more modern uh, Jixxer 750 uh, with your fuel injection and all that good stuff and better brakes, etc. But like I said, character-wise, you won't have what this bike uh, offers you. So it really does depend on what you as a person want from your bike and you know what you're willing to spend on it. You can get a good one of these for, you know, you're probably going to be spending four and a half thousand euro. Um, I've seen them in good, good condition for up to five thousand pounds in the UK. Uh, which obviously bringing that into Ireland would be <laughs> expensive now but you know they're there they're available if you really really want one um, you can get one and the good thing about them is parts are actually very easy to come by so when I wanted to rebuild this you know I could get the parts quite easily they're available they're out there um, you can even still buy the Yoshimura RS3 can for it uh, from Demon Tweaks brand new so you know there's parts there it's it's not it's not like you're buying into something that like the magna that everything is a struggle it's like oh hey i want to buy this and it's going to take me two months to find it you know it's not like that it is it's a you know it's it's an inline four engine that was basically stayed being used forever uh, you know i'm sure there's there's echoes of that engine and other things the frame there's lots of bits for the frame everywhere still available so yeah you you can you're not buying into something that you will not be able to maintain you're buying into a piece of history a piece of artistic history um, for the price you're paying so i think personally yes cost wise they're out there they're not they're not the cheapest bikes to buy but it's definitely worth it so you, you could like i said expect to pay four and a half five thousand euro for a decent one i think because i mean people who have them tend to not want to let them go like i'm i am never planning on selling this one even if i move country i'll ship it with me so now, any extras to talk about? Uh, this is the extras and practicality section. So extras, really easy, there are none. <laughs> you get like a, you know, your, your indicator uh, lights and whatnot on the dash, and you get a low fuel level warning light. Oh, 
Oh yes! I love this bike! <laughs> but actually hilariously, I didn't mean to make those points together. But why the hell do you need extras when your bike can do that? That's the only extra you need. You have indicators, you have an engine on switch. What more do you need? <laughs> Um, and then practicality. So I, look, I don't know how practical this bike will be in the long run. I'll be certain to let you know. This will be appearing on my commuter series. I'm going to do a you know commute on this. I probably won't do more than one. Like I said, it's not the most comfortable bike out there uh, for for me for tall people. I'm sure on a, as a shorter person, this would be hilariously comfortable because you'd have a lot more room. Um, but practicality wise. You know, they're not bad on fuel, they're not good on fuel. It is, it is you know, a 1996 bike uh, made for power delivery, not for fuel economy. So if you're looking for something like this for fuel economy, look somewhere else. It's the wrong bike for you. However, however, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, okay, how practical is it? I can keep this running essentially forever. It has carbs, etc. The carb diversions, and I can attest to this because I've done it, the carbs are not that bad to rebuild. They're absolutely fine. So I think as a as a long-term runner, yes, you have the inherent unreliability of carbs, but overall, you know, brakes are easy to rebuild, the carbs are easy to rebuild, all that stuff is easy to maintain and rebuild. So thumbs up all the way around. I, I'm saying it's a it's a pretty practical bike if you're looking at long-term maintenance. Uh, these engines tend to last forever. I uh, you know people have 70 80 000 miles on them this one only is like 20 something so i'll have it for a while and that's kind of you know that's kind of it really uh, it is it is it the practical bike from comfort from rain protection from fuel economy no it's absolutely not but if that's why you're buying this bike like i said you're, you're buying the wrong bike the only extra you need is the one i displayed and absolutely if that's all you're looking for from a bike it is 300 million thousand percent worth it absolutely every day of the week oh, I yes <laughs> to summarize and some final thoughts I told you what I thought of this bike you know from a personal level I absolutely love it we're in six we're gonna we're gonna cruise for this um, you know power and torque are still a lot I, I actually don't know what's faster on the road uh, this from my CBF this feels faster so power and torque wise, forget the numbers, it feels, it feels fast. And that's what's important to me on a road bike. Um, you know, you want it to feel good out in the road. And a huge part of that is definitely, you know, the frame and suspension setup. This thing just tips in, it is so, so, so controlled on the road. Like even right now, I'm, I'm actually, you know, doing half the speed limit because my speed is broken. <clears throat> but it is so controlled. You, everything you get, feedback wise, I can feel all of that it is so nice so 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 nice and a good set of tires on it is essential for that so yeah power torque control handling um even the braking yes i would recommend putting on you know the braided brake lines and because i've used them i would recommend hel i've no affiliation with them but they're very good so as a road bike this thing is mm, perfect you have plenty of power plenty of braking plenty of suspension and tippy performance absolutely unbelievable i love it um is this the bike for you if you are six foot seven and weigh about as much as me it is not the most comfortable bike in the world it'll do especially like if you're like me and you just love it you know you're not gonna you're not gonna gripe about a little bit of discomfort uh, maybe you will i don't know i i personally don't but yeah i i love it i love it so Final thoughts from me. I think if you can get your hands on one of these for a reasonable price, in reasonably good condition, and you know you want that 90s era sports bike, you can't go wrong. It looks wise, everything. It, this bike to me is the perfect sports bike for the road. It's the perfect amount of power. It's light as a feather. It's not too uncomfortable. It's pretty good on fuel. It looks absolutely fantastic. So yeah, for me, if I was going to buy a 90 sports bike, and if this one went on fire and blew up in the morning, I would 100% try and get another one in this color. Like overall, for me, this bike is pretty much a 10 out of 10. I love it. I love how it looks. I love how it feels. I love how it rides. I love this bike. So if you have watched, thank you very much for watching. 
As always, a very special thank you to my patrons. Uh, you're all legends. I do appreciate the hell out of you supporting the channel. Uh, genuinely mean that, mean that. It helps. It helps motivation more than anything else, and I love you for it. And yeah, until next time, thank you very much again for watching. Let me know down in the comments, would you buy one of these bikes and what color you would want it in? And would you want carbureted or EFI? And yeah, that's it. Thank you again. Adios. Outro crew. I do think I need a louder exhaust though. What do you all think? Let me know. Bye. Ah, oh, Nissan Micras. My old foes. <laughs> Jesus, that was... <laughs> oh, I think that says all I need to ever say about a Nissan Micra. My nemesis. <sighs> and we are here to get my coffee. My whole reason for travel in the first place. See, I'm a good boy. I don't, I don't do things that are bold. I am a good boy.